Well, uh, politically, I was uh, a member of the uh, Allegheny County uh, Health Board and the uh, uh, Forester and Let's see, there were three, Forrester and, uh, <laughs> Forrester, three, three, uh, well, Forrester was what, uh, uh, he was a politician, and he was head of the, Allegheny County Health Board, and I was on the Health Board Committee for two years, and I was on the uh, on the uh, a member of the Allegheny County. Mental Health Committee for two years. One time, three years, and for another time, two years. And I, uh, I did the, uh, um, the Addison Terrace Learning Center was a an organization out from the uh, one of the members of the of uh, the uh, county's uh, different boards. They had uh, they had the the mental health and they had. Uh, Mental health, they had the, uh, uh, they had other organizations like, let's see, Addison Terrace Learning Center, the, um, the, uh, that was in the Hill District. And they had a uh, a uh, they had annual meetings, and they uh, did uh, teaching uh, lessons to some of the organizations that were connected to the county health board and the psychiatric health. Board, and they kept track of their of their activities, and uh, then we went to we went to organization for uh, for annual meetings and for and rabbi or. Rabbi, oh, see, I, I had his with the name. T. I got that far on there. Huh? I, can't I can't remember his name. I remember um, starting with the T. Gateway Center, you know, Gateway Center, the Rabbi Torsky. Okay. Uh, he was the director of the Gateway Center Rehabilitation Center for Drug Activities, and uh, that was out towards North Hill, and. Uh, We had we had several uh, satellite groups from that that uh, he instructed and uh, he organized and he treated some of the patients and. Uh,
then the uh, when we uh, were on the board, we went to the different uh, organizations that were connected to the uh, Allegheny County Health uh, Board, and they and instructed them on what to do and what to uh, how to treat the patient, and then we took the uh, uh, reports and and we showed we we instructed the other groups that were connected with the health health and mental health that we uh, combined them and explained to them the difference between the two and why it was important that they ha that the patients stay in the club and get the treatment that they needed. Uh, then I was... There were uh, some of your mission activities too, aren't there? Some of the mission trips you went on in your 60s and 70s? In my churches. Uh, well, my first, uh, my first overseas trip was in, uh, in 1974 when I went to Portugal with the Alumni Association of Pitt. And, uh, the nice thing about that was that when I was working at Western Site, the housekeeper there was taking up money for the um, Fat Fatima, the three girls, the three children that saw the Blessed Mary. They were building a, a home and a hotel and things over there. And when I got to Portugal, and I saw that that Fatima was on the uh, list. I said to my husband, we've got to take that trip, regardless of how much it costs. <laughs> so we did. And it was, uh, we left our hotel in Portugal for uh, Fatima at 9 o'clock, arrived at the Hotel Fatima at the lunchtime. Uh, that was, uh, if you know anything about East Liberty, East Liberty Boulevard runs from Negley Avenue to Frankstown Avenue. In uh, Portugal, the Fatima grounds ran from like uh, Negley Avenue to Frankstown. And there was uh, uh, farms on either side, and uh, the family lived at one, one family lived at one end, and the other family, the brother and his family lived at the other end, and I rode a donkey cart from one end to the other, because I couldn't walk that far, even in those days. And uh, they had, the family had sent uh, one of the children to the United States to college. Every year they sent another student to college in, in the United States. Uh, the funny thing was that we, we exchanged uh, uh, money and they had their own altar in the center of their land. And it was a brick building with an altar in it. And it had all the things for the altar. And it was just a remarkable home. And uh, the way we got there was that on Saturday, I was in the post office trying to buy stamps for 
postcards and uh, letters. And uh, this lady came in, and she had been to America, and she could speak English as good as me. So uh, she told me stamps and things, and so I got them. So on Sunday morning, one of the members from our trip and I, from McKeesport, and I was walking up to the Catholic Church, and uh, who should come down the street but this lady and her husband and two sons. And, and she saw me, and they backed up and turned around and uh, wanted to know where we were going. And we said to church. And so they had the boys were, I guess, five and six years old, or six and seven. So they got in that little back part of the little car uh, that you use for travel, for suitcases and stuff. And we got in the car and they took us to church. And so when she got there, she said, where are you going this afternoon? And we said, we didn't have anything scheduled. So she said, well, I'm going to come back to your hotel at 2 o'clock and get you, get your wife, and you get your husband, and we'll all go back out to our place. And so they came, and we went back to uh, their place first, and we had uh, something to eat and some wine, and we exchanged paper money and change, and then we rode down to the other end, to the brother's home, and it was a long distance, so I rode the donkey cart. And uh, on either side was the uh, cauliflower on one side and uh, broccoli on the cauliflower and Brussels sprouts broccoli. Which is it? Brussels sprouts or poffy? It's green. It's Brussels sprouts. It was on the other side. And then we got to the other brother's home and uh, the uh, and met his family. And his daughter was going to America this September. This was in April, and she was going to United States College in in September. And so all their children went to United States to college. And they kept in touch with me for a long time and invited me to their home. But I could not afford to pay the street price to go from Pittsburgh to Schistler, <laughs> it cost too much. I couldn't afford that. But we kept in touch for a long time. But that was one of the most uh, meaningful trips because I had actually seen something that I had donated to years ago. And I never thought I would see that. And I really I really enjoyed seeing that, and that was the best trip. And when we left our hotel at nine o'clock in the morning, we got there, we got to the hotel for lunch, and uh, the table was all set up and had the soup dishes with, with the round uh, thing around the big circle and then the little wine edge around those soup bowls. And the nurse took the soup bowl off the table and the male uh, 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 waiter uh, served the split pea soup, my favorite soup, into the soup bowl. And then they had a carafe of wine on the table for each one. And uh, the meals were delicious. And uh, 
That was the first trip I went overseas, and it's one I'll never forget, the things that I've seen that day. Where'd you get the Where'd you get the instrument? She has instruments huh? in her room. Oh, the instrument came from Yugoslavia, and we went there in '75 to uh, Yugoslavia, and they had a boat ride, and like the Gateway Cooper, and the people were on there making these instruments. They had one string and one bow, but they make such beautiful music when they play them. And they play them after church on Sunday morning, after the 11 o'clock service. They play, they play an uh, orchestra from this, with these instruments, play uh, this beautiful music with one string instrument and one bow. And it's gorgeous. And so I decided to buy one, but I never learned to play it. And, uh... African? Uh, what else did we do when you go to African? Out? When we went to Africa, that was in 77. But in 76, we went... My daughter and I went to the National x ray Convention in Hawaii. And uh, it met from from uh, Sunday to Thursday. And then the Pennsylvania Society uh, rented the plane. And so we had another extra week travel. And we went from uh, Friday morning, we went to the Black Island. And we went uh, by air. And then we went to the other uh, places by a bus, and we went to all the other places, and we went through a lava tube, and we saw, we went and had lunch, and we could see the volcano with it, the stream coming out of the, out of it, like it steam from a, from a kettle boiler, and we were just praying that it would not really boil till we got off that hour, <laughs> and so we didn't. Uh, but on the way home, they uh, stopped at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and went out of the way so we could see an active uh, volcano and we could see the, uh, the fire dropping into the water, and it made such beautiful pictures like fireworks uh, from the water going into, from the far, far uh, from the volcano going into the water. And uh, that's a wonderful, they set the alarm on the ship so it could wake everybody up and they could get their cameras and take pictures. And uh, that was in, Hawaii, and we came home from Hilo, which was then the biggest sea airport. Uh, but then I went back to all Hawaii in 97, and uh, my niece and I uh, toured all the islands uh, by, by boat. So we never got off the boat. We just put, you know, we went to the other places and got off and ro rode the little a shuttle but, but boat to the Grand and visited some of the little island places. And that was a wonderful trip. And. Uh, how about Africa, Auntie? Huh? How about Africa and the safari? Okay, Africa was uh, 77. And uh, we went to Africa on a university tour. And on the way from the airport uh, to uh, Kenya, 
we saw the beautiful uh, field with nothing but giraffe, babies and mothers and fathers and children and everybody, all sizes of, of kangaroo, of, uh, yeah, what I say, kangaroo, running and playing, and that was really a sight to see those animals running and playing, just like dolls, dogs run and play in the yard. And uh, so that's the first thing I bought was two wooden, uh, two wooden giraffe when I got to where I could buy something. And uh, Africa was, the safaris were, was really wonderful. Uh, and we went on one, and uh, an elephant tr a tr tribe came down the road, and one of them stopped at about uh, four blocks from our car, and we were standing up taking pictures, and he was standing there like he was ready to charge. I stepped my picture and sat down and started praying that he would. But then uh, I don't know where this Zeep came from, but a Zeep showed up. And I don't know whether he blew his horn or what he did, but that uh, elephant turned around and went and joined the crowd. And so we didn't see him anymore. And uh, then. Uh, when we got back to uh, uh, the city uh, from the safari, uh, we were sitting around, people were sitting around taking pictures. And uh, my husband was across the road on the other hotel, and, and I took his picture. And <laughs> this tall, seven-foot African came over to me and said, give me your camera. And I said, give you my camera for what? You took my picture. I said, I don't take your picture. I said, see that little short guy over there? That's whose picture I took. That's my husband. And all the people standing around me said, that's her husband. So he went on the way. But when I got home and got the pictures developed, I did have his picture. <laughs> <laughs> but I, he didn't know it, and I didn't know it either until I got home and got the pictures developed. <laughs> but I mean, he had me scared for about three minutes until the other women started saying, yes, that's her husband over there. <laughs> so then he walked away. But, uh, and then uh, we went to, when we were getting dressed to go back to the city, uh, they had elephants and camels out there to, for us to ride on. And I was trying to find something to put on. My husband said, put on the dirty clothes you had on to, to travel in that you, uh, to get on a dirty camel, you don't want no clean clothes. So I got up on the camel, had somebody take my picture, got off the camel. Because <laughs> when they get up, they get up like this, and you feel like you're going to fall over the head on the ground when you get off. And so, but that was really an experience. And, uh, how about some of your church trips, Auntie? How about some of the uh, Indian reservation you went on? Huh? The Indian reservation and down and down in uh, Mississippi. Uh, well, I, I never went went to any churches. I went to two. No, no, Auntie. For, remember when you your church uh -huh. went on mission trips? Uh huh. Where did you go? Oh, we went to the Navajo reservation. Mm -hmm. Uh, of Indians in out west in Arizona, I think, and we went to one. How old were you? Uh, Africa. 
No, no. What? Arizona. Arizona. Oh, let's see. It was 77. So 77 from 17 is zero. I was 67. 67 years old. Okay. And uh, then I went to what was it? Mississippi. To Africa, Yugoslavia, Dubrovnik, and then in the United States, I went to uh, Minnesota and St. Paul. And I always thought that Minnesota was the oldest city, but when I got out there, I found out that St. Paul's the oldest city. It was star started by the racketeer. Uh, St. Paul was the first uh, city. Of the Twin Cities. Huh? Of the Twin Cities. That was the Twin City, mm -hmm. yeah. And I always thought that the other one was vice versa. So sometimes you get the wrong idea, <laughs> but that was a, a a nice trip. I went to to uh, Minnesota for my sister-in-law's uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? Talking to their her one of her convention, and they have. In Minnesota, they have a place where you can go upstairs to the second floor and go from the downtown uh, Minnesota all the way up to the end of the of the city without going outdoors. When it's cold in the winter time, you can go all that way without getting cold because uh, they have a second story that goes across the city and you don't have to go outdoors until you go to the end. And that's a nice, a nice feature for Minnesota. And they have a playground in, uh, uh, playground like any would inside of the Minnesota mall. And Let's see, what else? Minnesota. Uh, How about Mississippi? Huh? Mississippi? Oh, that was one of my church missions. Mm -hmm. We were in Mississippi on a mission trip with Pleasant Hills Presbyterian Church. That's out in Southside, in the South Hills. And, um, uh, we're, we uh, stayed there for two weeks, and we cooked and, and had meals, and we built a playground for the children while we were there. And we, uh, we taught the children Bible school, and we uh, had a basketball game. For the yet some of the young people, and that was a nice trip. And then uh, Mississippi, my daughter found a, her favorite tree. She took pictures of it, <laughs> of her favorite tree. And they have uh, the Mississippi has. Uh, a lot of stores and things, uh, more than we have with, uh, you know, grocery stores like uh, John Eagle and stuff. They have some stores like that down in Mississippi. And uh, they, uh, they treat us very nice. We spent time with the, with the uh, teachers and uh, the pastor of the church, uh, Reverend uh, Dolphus Weary, wrote a book, I Ain't Coming Back, 
talking about Mississippi, but he did go back to Mississippi, and uh, but he left Mississippi about five years ago and moved to uh, Richmond, uh, Mississippi, and they have there also a mission church and uh, a mission school, and uh, they uh, have a ch children uh, in their school, in the, both grade school and high school. And they have uh, volunteers come from all the churches. There's some a lot of Presbyterian churches in the United States. They have missionaries who come and stay two weeks, three weeks. Some of them stay a month. But uh, the mission trips are really interesting, and you learn a lot from those people.